The left is mad again that Christians are engaging in politics. This morning, in fact, the D.C.-based Politico magazine ran a nearly 6,000-word excerpt. In fact, I have it right here. For those of you who are viewing, you can see it. This 42-page uh, article, 42 pages, nearly 6,000 words that Politico put out this morning, warning about the dangers of scary Christians involved in politics. And uh, again, it's uh, they, they use a lot, and we've seen this, the left, their uproar over Christian nationalism. Well, now it seems like the new buzzword that they're peddling is theocracy, that we need to be scared of all these Christians who are trying to instill a theocracy in our country. And as always, the intent of these type of pieces is both to gin up fear among the left, but at the same time to discourage faithful Christians from engaging in the culture through the political process. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Chad Conley. He's the founder of Faith Wins, and he is one of the primary subjects of this hit piece that came out today in Politico. So, Chad, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to have you. Hey, Jody. Great to see you, brother. I appreciate you. Man, it ain't quite nothing like uh, waking up and having Drudge Report and Politico calling you bad names. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I've had them call me bad names so many times I can't count. But to be honest with you, you win getting 42 pages. Uh, <laughs> I'm just stunned at the length of this thing, and you are one of the primary targets in this. And I guess in reality, Chad, we don't need to uh, dwell too much on the specific Politico piece today, but rather the bigger picture of what uh, the left attempts to do within the framework that they have right now, Christian nationalism uh, and what they now are seemingly moving towards theocracy. Uh, give us your, your picture, your take on all of this. You know, it's amazing. People who will acknowledge they don't know our Lord, don't love the Lord, don't, can barely find a church with a flashlight. And uh, the guy who wrote the article I spoke to in the interview says he's a believer. And I asked him if he spent quite as much time chasing down the liberal churches that had always told people exactly how to vote, and we don't, we never have, or if they chased down the churches who were busy hanging BLM or pride flags off the side of it as they did chasing down people who were just trying to teach Christians to be biblical Christians. And I asked him that question, Jody, you know, how do we as Christians become the salt and light that Jesus commanded us to be if we're not voting, if we're not being informed, and if we're not voting biblical values? And I think what happened that night when he came to my meeting, we had like 700 people in a church in Dayton, Ohio on a Tuesday night. You know, everybody would go, that's fantastic. And I think there were 50 or so pastors there, and it was just a really good event. And we were interviewing in the vestibule. He, he never listened to my talk, didn't listen to David Barton's, of course. And this guy walks through with a Trump hat. And one guy out of 700, 750 people, he says, see, doesn't that bother you that you're contributing to the division that is in America? And I said, Look, man, you found one Trump hat out of 750 people on a church on a Tuesday night. I said, I saw a Packers hat a little bit ago, too. We're in Ohio. Isn't that blasphemous to be wearing a Green Bay Packers hat? And so I think the bigger picture here is exactly what you said, what Tony's been talking about. This is all meant to be a diversion and to make Christians put their heads down. Well, I got to tell you, I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged. I think when you're over the target, that's when the flat comes. They start firing at you. And we're clearly over the target because I believe there's an awakening going on among God's people, Jody, that has, I believe it's the, the best awakening you've seen in a long time. And our buddy David Barton even feels like this. there's a spiritual awakening going on. Christians everywhere are saying, I've got to be involved. I've got to be informed. Absolutely. And it is in the midst of this effectiveness that light, uh, the light of the gospel and the truth of God's word has, when it starts making an impact, these people don't know how to deal with it. Their only response is attack, attack, attack. Uh, and that's one thing I love about you, Chad. You refuse 
to surrender to that. You refuse to wave a white flag, just as we hear at FRC as well. We're just not going to wave a white flag at this. Salt and light, by virtue of the entire discussion and teaching of Jesus, is impossible without being engaged. We have to engage this thing, and now more than ever. Let me ask you this. The, the left, and I brought this up a while ago, but I want to specifically get your reaction to this. To this. The, the, the left repeatedly has uh, actually failed, I believe, to define what they mean by Christian nationalism. I know I got hit on the media one time in Congress, and they were asking me about this, and I asked them to define it, and I said, what do you mean by that? And, of course, they stumbled all over themselves and couldn't get there. They repeatedly failed to give a definition of uh, Christian nationalism. They seem now to be shifting to the word theocracy. Is this in your, are you hearing more of this? Is this their new scare term, if you will? Yeah, I think so, too. And I, I've taken the same tack you have, Jody. I always turn around and say, what, what do you mean by that? Can you define that for me? Because they can't. And I, I tell them, look, I'm, I'm trying to get people to be biblical Christians, and we ought to be biblical Americans. And, you know, Jesus, when he says to be salt and light, Jody, he says, if you're not going to be salt and light, you are worth worth nothing, good for nothing to be thrown in the street and trodden before the feet of men. I, I love your track and how you handle that. That's what I do is ask them a question. And when you turn that back on them, they don't know how to define it. And, you know, the, the whole argument about a theocracy, nobody I've ever been around ever in any of the Christian space leadership, the discussions about God's role in America. Nobody ever talks about this is the only way. But the fact of the matter is God's role in America is irreplaceable. We wouldn't have religious liberty. We wouldn't have the freedoms. You know, what God's role did in our nation was to create the freest, most successful nation in the history of mankind, where more people can go from where they are to where they want to be based on their effort, their work, their desire, their will to win, if you will. And so God's role in America has set us apart to make us an exceptional nation. And the fact is, they have to call names because they don't know how to deal with that. They don't want to be in the competition, and they want to push us down by calling names. Man, I love debating liberals. Because as soon as you start debating them, they'll call you names. And my, my pat answer is, goodness gracious, I knew that I would win this on the facts and on the truth and in the public arena. I didn't know you'd give up so quick and start calling names. Is that really all you have? And so my take on it is always to turn it on them and to let them know they don't even know what they're defining. Can you at least tell me what you're talking about? And they really don't. Newt Gingrich told me something one time, Jody, uh, you know, a fellow Georgian of yours, he said, you know, Chad, the media is lazy, and they'll find a story. They don't have to dig. They don't have to research. They'll repeat a story and cite that story as their proof, and then they'll say, well, you know, this guy wrote about it, and they don't even know if that guy did the study, and I just don't think 99,000 out of 999,001 could tell you why in the world uh, this is being used except to discourage Christians. Absolutely. Well, I don't know if you were able to see it earlier in the program. We had Congressman Andy Harris from Maryland on with us, and rather jokingly, but uh, I, I mentioned that you were going to be on the program a little bit later on, and I said, Andy, you've been here in Washington for a good long while. Is there any indication or any movement whatsoever that would make anyone believe that Washington, D.C. is about to become a theocracy? And, of course, he chuckled and said, uh, no, that's not about to happen. And yet that is the, the false narrative, and they use it to create fear. So the left seems to be trying to establish some sort of false dichotomy, if you will, between being a Christian and being a citizen. Uh, in yeah. fact, I, was, I, I remember this vividly in 2017. In fact, we have a clip here. I want to pull this up. Clip three, if okay. you guys will prepare this for you. And, and I'd like to get your reaction to this. This is how the left feels about Christians believing what they say they actually believe. Let's play clip three. And uh... You think your statement that you put into that publication, they do not know God because they've rejected Jesus Christ the Son and they stand condemned? Do you think that's respectful of other religions? Senator, I wrote a post based on being a Christian and attending a Christian school that has a statement of faith that speaks clearly with regard to the centrality of Jesus Christ in salvation. I would simply say, Mr. Chairman, that this nominee 
um, is really not someone who is what this country is supposed to be about. I remember that vividly, <laughs> Russ Vogt, and, and that was not all that Bernie Sanders said. It got worse than that. I'm sure you remember it as well, Chad. Uh, give me your reactions to that. You know, uh, Russ came and spoke at a conference you and I have been a part of and, uh, and cited that very story. And, you know, what's really sad about it, Jody, is somebody in an elected official position like a Senator Sanders is not even familiar enough with biblical history, with American history, to understand the undergirding that Russ Vault was referring to there. That that's what's sad is they don't bother to find out what you know what God's role was, what the founders said. They've uh, immediately discounted it because it doesn't fit their own narrative. And the, the truth of the matter is, when we have that foundation of Jesus as our Savior, it is the freest, most available, most open opportunity for the, everybody the entire world to be a part, and America has only proven it over and over again. And when somebody in a high position like Bernie Sanders goes through that epistle to try to undermine a candidate's uh, uh, credibility like he did in that hearing, it really tells you it's an indictment on Sanders, not on Russ Vault. Absolutely. And, hey, you know, going back to that, I refer again to this Politico uh, article, 42 pages. Well, one of the things they come after you is really what you're, you're an expert on America's Christian heritage, our, our Christian history and our founding and so forth. And they come after you for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've always been outspoken about our nation's Christian founding and history, but the left insists to go against truth and try to paint a picture of America as evil or uh, whatever. Why do they do this? You know, I, I'm, it's so sad. And the real thing, when you look at like a, a David Barton that spent 40 years collecting factual documentation, they own 160,000 pieces of American documentation, original sourcing, 120,000 before 1812. I think they do it because they so hate the idea of freedom. They, they believe that they're elites they're smarter than you and I. You know, you peons need to sit in the corner. We'll tell you what to think. We'll tell you what your opinion is. They don't like the idea of freedom. They believe that they've cornered wisdom. We know the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so, Jody, you and I know from biblical truth, you don't even get wisdom. You can have knowledge, but you don't get wisdom without the fear of the Lord. So these people don't even have that foundational aspect of the fear of the Lord that gets them to the level of wisdom. So they're going to use their knowledge, you know, as we make a joke in South Carolina, the PhDs piled high and deep is they, they'll pile, pile all their knowledge high and deep with here's what we know. And they feel enlightened and they feel like we've got this special bit of knowledge. It's not unlike the new age movements, the Gnostics, the, 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 the atheists of way back when trying to discount the truth of the Bible. When you and I know the Bible has been nothing but proven over and over and over again. I've been to Israel, bless those people's hearts. I pray for them daily. Uh, you know, Tony and I did that show here in South Carolina about Israel. Been there twice in the last uh, 16 months. But the truth of the Bible comes out when you go to Israel, and archaeologists only confirm the truth of the Bible. They don't deny it, and they don't find things that diminish it. They find things that prove it out. And so, look, uh, me, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're imperfect people. We're not, we're not perfect either, but we're saved. And we're forgiven. And uh, I believe that a man hung on a tree for me and for you. And uh, that God became a uh, flesh and bone. And, and he came here and walked the earth and lived a sinless life and took away the sins of the world. And I believe that's the most open opportunity in the history of mankind. And I believe only reason people would discount that and diminish it and deny it is they can't accept the truth of it because it's just so simple. Absolutely. Chad Conley from Faith Winds, always an honor to speak with you, my brother. God bless you. Keep the torch ablaze. And thank you for joining us on Washington Watch. Hey, honor's mine. I'll see you soon in deep sea. God bless you. Merry Christmas, Jody. God bless you. Thank you.